I mean, I can remember the Morris Minor. When the Morris Minor first came out, when Izzy Gonis brought out the Minor in 1949, it had an 848 engine from the, like the old Morris 8. And then that ended up as a 1098. It had a 998, I think. And that was the Morris 1000. And that engine ended up as a 1098. So it was effectively right. an 1100. Right, okay. And that, wow. would, that would make a difference. And I can remember the Morris Traveller, the last ones, the minor itself, the saloon finished, I think, in 1969. And you could uh -huh. get a brand new Morris Traveller, very popular with teachers, by the way, uh, up right. until about 1971, 72. Right, okay. I think a K, a K Reg was the last of the travellers, and I can remember people saying, oh, but the price of them, I mean, they're, they're up to 9 50 now. Right. Reliable? Were they quite reliable? Oh, they, well, they were too reliable. I think that's why they took them off. They were pure British cars. And uh -huh. um, uh -huh. under the bonnet, you had plenty of room. The earlier ones had a starting handle if the battery was down. Uh, right. When you looked under the bonnet, here was this fabulous little four-cylinder engine. There uh -huh. was um, a, a brake master cylinder. The clutch master cylinder was under the driver's uh, footwell. Um, right. You had uh, an electric petrol pump, and you had a dynamo and um, a carburetor, obviously, and a little control box, when you revved it up, the headlights got brighter. And that's oh, how you could tell the little control box was working. And um, that was about it. Oh, you know, and a coil, sorry, a coil as well. So you had an electric petrol pump, a coil, a little four-cylinder engine, and the... Um, the spark plugs and everything, everything was very accessible. The distributor right. cap was there, and uh, you could sort out the points. So there was anything not running with a car, you could find out what it was. It was one of, like, half a dozen things. Right, okay. Right. Absolutely uh, no, no plugging into any kind of diagnostics. You could tell by your ear. Or if the car would start and used to bump start them, let it run down the hill, shove it in second gear. Uh, the choke had a pull-out choke, so you could get the engine running, uh, and it pulled out in little notches, little sections, so you could set the choke to keep the revs up a wee bit on a cold right. morning. And these cars always started. Yeah. You know? I remember a friend saying that his big, and I won't mention the name of it, but his big gentleman's car would not start in the winter some mornings, but his wife's Morris Minor always started. <laughs> but it's amazing, Scotty, and I, I always laugh because when you look at some cars now, and even new build houses, and how they get it so wrong, and you would think by now, you know, exactly. they would get it right. Karim, I think you're reading my mind. You're exactly 100% correct. How on earth can you still have problems? How are new cars being recalled when in the 1950s the brakes and clutches were excellent? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is what I don't quite understand. But you see, people, uh, not everybody had a car when I was wee, but people <laughs> bought a car very often for life. Right. So okay. the Morris Minor... Uh, one of the reasons they, they gave them up is they were just lasting too long. Mm -hmm. And they'd exported thousands of these to the British colonies. They were in Australia and New Zealand and Canada. And, uh, and they, were in, um, they were in Kenya and Nigeria and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're just good cars. They're just amazing cars. And Google... Yeah, look them up. Look up Morris Minor 1000, the wee saloon. It's a little Morris sort of beetle-backed car. Um, you right. know, and, and it's similar in ideas to the Volkswagen. Right. Okay. But, it's, okay. but the engine was in the front, and, uh, and yeah. it was a fantastic thing. And what you did with the early ones, you had a starter. Uh, yeah. It was a pool starter. It wasn't a button. So you turned on the ignition... Nothing happened, right. and then you pulled the starter. 
and that's it done. Okay. Remember they make, um, if I can say, they don't, they don't exist anymore, but Rover. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it was mm -hmm. some uh, some sharp business people that got rid of Rover. But yeah. um, Rovers, the early Rovers were just outstanding. And yeah. they were yeah. judged. You had a Rover 75 and a Rover right. 80, a Rover 90, a Rover yeah. 95, a Rover 100, and a 105. And that was what, because that's the speeds they could go at, Max. So the Rover uh, right, 75 okay. did 75 when that was a very respectable speed, you know? Yeah, yeah. Rover was a British make, yes. Oh, yes, very much so, the Rover car. Yeah. See, Kareem, all these people, there were actual individuals. For instance, Bentley. Bentley uh, was a guy, Walter Bentley, Walter Owen Bentley, W.O. Bentley. Uh, you know, and... um. Uh, what else are you? Armstrong Sidley. So there was an ah. Armstrong and a Sidley. Right. And when okay. we talked about the jump jet yesterday coming from Hawkers, who had produced the Hawker Hurricane uh, under ah. Sopwith, um, Hawkers, there was a Harry Hawker. Right. You okay. see? So that's, ah. these are the wonderful, wonderful things. And we talked about Saunders' role. There was Sam Saunders, a launch builder from Stretley on the Thames, and the row was Sir Elliot Verdon Row, AV Row of Avro Aircraft. Right, AV okay. Row. Right. So Avro was AV Row. The Spitfire right. was, was designed by, uh, by Mitchell. You know, the actual... The, so these people were very real. Barnes Wallace that did the bouncing bomb for the dam busters. Ah, Barnes Wallace right. um, asked the air ministry if for his experiments he could have the materials and also a Wellington bomber. And they said, right. well, you can have the materials, old boy, but I'm not so sure about the Wellington. <laughs> and he said, would it help if I told them I designed it? Right, okay. <laughs> Oh, incredible. And Alec Isigonis, who designed the Morris Minor, 10 years later designed the uh, Morris and Austin Mini. Ah, right, and, okay. Uh, and right. he did it in my friend's house, and my friend suggested the transverse engine to him. Right, right. You know, because he said, he, he said, I can't come for dinner because I'm working. And Reg said to him, he said, well, come to us, Alex, have your Sunday lunch, and then you can work in my room upstairs in the study. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. he came down for afternoon tea. He said, how are you getting on with that new car? He said, I can't get the power to weight ratio right. And uh -huh. that was when they talked about putting the engine sideways in the front. Right. And uh -huh. the rest is spin. Away they go. <laughs> the rest is history. I mean, absolutely incredible. Some of the people yeah. I've met, you know. And I can remember staying with some lovely, lovely people. And their grandfather was an air commodore in the RAF. And he'd been a major in the Royal Flying Corps, which was a regiment right. of the army and the forerunner of the RAF. Right. So uh, pre-1918, okay. you yeah, had the Royal Flying Corps. And uh, there was a lovely letter addressed to him, Dear Major... Here's photos of the first flight from London to Cairo. And they were sitting having tea in the desert on travelling rugs. And he said, they were only taken with an ordinary hand camera, but I thought you would like a record of them. Signed, Geoffrey de Havilland. Right, okay. <laughs> so Jeff de Havilland was a great friend of his, and that's de Havilland Aircraft. Right, right. It's right. amazing, well, isn't it? You know, just these yeah. characters. And I've been so fortunate to meet yeah. all these people, you know? People. Yeah. Oh, God, sorry. You've certainly seen a lot as well, now, oh, goodness. But, they, but you, they, know. you know, the lovely... Well, you see, I tend to judge people when somebody says, so and would you like to meet so-and-so? And it's somebody <laughs> famous. I think, well, are they a nice person? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I don't want to meet... Yeah. I mean... You know, my friend had some very famous people to speak at university, and he came out and said, oh, dreadful man. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. awful, you know, arrogant. And